Chris Jospek. I am a um, pastry chef and owner of Cookies by the Dozen. And actually today we're going to be working on some focaccia. Uh, this was a fan request, so um, we're going to make it. It's great for panini sandwiches, it's great to dip in olive oil, it's just an all around delicious bread. And you can do it with or without herbs. So we're just going to make a basic one today. Um, what you're going to need, you're going to need six cups of room temperature water. We'll just measure that out. And to that, I'm going to add two tablespoons of instant yeast. Just need a little more here. And our instant yeast, our instant dry yeast, looks like that. This one's a Fleischmann's, but you can use SAF or any brand that you like. So we need two tablespoons. And I've made this a million times. I could probably make this in my sleep. And then you can use any herbs that you like. I happen to really love this Yaz Herbal Delight that I found. Um, it's made here locally in Charlotte and I really love it. So I just sprinkle that across. Of course, rosemary, fresh rosemary is um, the uh, typical herbs. And we're just gonna let that set and I'm just gonna whisk that together and get that yeast all incorporated with the water. Just gonna whisk that a little bit just to get that working. And to that, we're going to add 12 cups of unbleached all-purpose flour. And I like to use King Arthur flour. I feel it's got a great consistency. For this, we're not using bread flour. Bread flour has a little bit more gluten, and this is a light and airy bread. So we don't really want to develop a lot of gluten. So for that purpose, I just use um, all-purpose flour. It's a really spongy, wet dough, so you don't need a lot of kneading or anything like that. It's just basically a mix. I'm adding two tablespoons of kosher salt. I like kosher salt because it's not really strong. It's got a nice mellow salty flavor. We're gonna be adding more salt to our pan on top and bottom of the focaccia so that gets that working. We're gonna add about four tablespoons or a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. And you wanna use a really good olive oil because it, the flavors really come through in this. I even really like a Greek olive oil uh, it's a little bit stronger in olive flavor, but you can use any one that you have or that you like. Last one here, and then we're going to sprinkle it with some fresh rosemary before we mix it. And in this dough, we're just going to mix by hand because it doesn't require any heavy duty kneading, as I said. So we'll go ahead and put our fresh rosemary in there from my garden. And maybe we'll add some fresh oregano that I picked earlier, too. So you can put any herbs that you like basil, rosemary. Whatever. Um, rosemary is really traditional. And then we're just going to make a little well in the center and just start getting incorporating that flour in there. So again, this kind of goes with my one bowl theory. You know, you don't want to mess up your whole kitchen. So just go ahead and get that mixed in there until all of the flour is moistened. And I always have a little bit of extra water handy just in case, you know, for whatever reason that, that um, flour is really dry. Don't be afraid of yeast, it's not going to hurt anything. You'll notice that I kept the yeast and the salt apart until I mixed all of it together. Salt is a retardant for yeast, it kills it off. So we really want to keep it apart until we get it all mixed together so it's not quite as strong. Now dough loves two different things, it loves moisture and heat. That will help activate it. So if you want to slow down the process, of it rising and, and um, coming to temperature, then you're going to keep it in a colder environment. If you want it to go at a little bit quicker pace, you keep it in a warmer environment. In the bakery, we have <clears throat> a warming area, but in a home kitchen, you don't have that. So the way that we replicate that is by using a bag. This is what your dough will look like after an hour, hour and a half of rising. And it's nice and bubbly. You can kind of see some of the bubbles and the airiness of the dough. So we're going to park our newly mixed dough inside a clean bag and just cover it. That environment will help create a nice, warm, moist environment, which it, dough loves. At this point, when we have, after it's, like I said, after it's set for an hour, hour and a half, you should see nice striations and good amount of bubbles. And you should smell that yeasty, bubbly beer almost smelling. 
So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and pan it up. And if we just wanna take a pause here for a second, I'm gonna clean off my hands and I'll show you what that looks like. So we're back and I'm gonna show you how to pan up your focaccia dough. There's all different kinds of ways you can do it. You can do it in round pans, you can do it on a flat. You can do it, we're gonna do a flat in a square. And then we're gonna do some rolls because it's just something that I like to have around. So first we're gonna sprinkle some kosher salt on the bottom of our pan. And I have pan liners on there. You can use parchment paper, which comes in sheets like this, to line your pan with. Or you can use um, what I'm using, which are silk hats. They just happen to be floral silk hats because I thought they were cute. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and put the salt in here and go ahead and drizzle your olive oil over the entire pan. It will look like a lot of oil, but it will get soaked up into the bread and be delicious, which is extremely important because it is an olive oil based bread. So don't be afraid of your dough. With impeccably clean hands, go ahead and grab a portion of your dough. Squeeze the dough until it releases and pick it up and just let it fall. Do that again until you've covered the bottom of your pan. You'll see it spreads nicely. I add a little bit of olive oil to my hands and I go ahead and spread it out. It'll spring back. If you've ever worked with pizza dough, it's a very similar texture, maybe a little bit looser, but we're just gonna spread it out a little bit and then we're gonna let it rise. And we'll let it rise until it gets nice and springy and airy. So about an hour or so. So we'll set that off to the side and let that rise. And now we're gonna go ahead and make some rolls. Now, you have to imagine that as your dough um, is formed, it's going to double in size. So for instance, this little portion of dough will be double what it, what it is now. So I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So we're gonna go ahead and place those. You're just pinching off pieces of dough. And we're putting it on our olive oil sheet pan. And we're gonna come back and add some fresh herbs to the top, some salt and some olive oil on top as well. Now you can make them look pretty. If you wanna do what I'm doing, you're just folding your dough into each other. So you're just folding it in, folding it in, pushing your finger and releasing. Or you can just do the quick method and just drop it in blobs as you would biscuits. They will go ahead and form pretty little rolls themselves. You don't have to worry about what it looks like because once it rises, really it takes on its own shape anyway. So it's a very forgiving dough. You can do big ones, little ones, however you wish. I would say when you're baking them to keep them about the same size, otherwise you'll have some that are really done and some that are overdone. So we'll go ahead and let that rise after we put our salt and our oil on there and our herbs. And I'm gonna do the same thing with our loaf here. So we're gonna put some real pretty rosemary in there so we have a for pretty ones. Done, and we'll put some oregano on top of some of them. And maybe we'll do some with some dried herbs. It's okay. Oops, there goes my lid. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna let these go ahead and rise. And once that happens, you're gonna bake them in a 450 degree oven. And I'll show you that. All right, so after they've risen and you bake them, this would be what our square looks like. And this is what our rolls look like. And I'm just gonna cut into this to show you what the interior looks like. So, you can see that it's a nice airy crumb. It's moist and soft, but the outside is a little bit on the crispy side. So it's great for little slider sandwiches, it's great for deli sandwiches. And this one, you could actually do um, paninis on that. You can slice this up to dip it, you can fill it, you can cut the whole thing and do a giant um, bobaletta or panini. So there's lots of different options. You can bake it in a larger loaf and use it as sandwich bread, but I hope you try it. And I'd be, feel free to ask, ask any questions that you like. I'll be happy to answer them. Happy baking. He likes bread and butter. He likes toast and jam. That's what his baby feeds him. He's a loving.